Welcome everyone. So our next speaker is Diego uh, with uh, Snab, a toolkit for user space networking. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, thank you very much. Thanks for attending this talk. Uh, and this talk, talk uh, title is Snap. I'm going to talk about this toolkit for programming uh, users, networking functions in user spell, a space. It's called Snap. Um, basically, what I would like to achieve with this talk is three things. Introduce you to Snap, explain a little bit how it works, and what kind, show you what kind of things you can build with Snap. So let's go for it. Uh, what is a Snap? A Snap is a toolkit for developing network functions in user space, and it's mostly aimed for high performance networking. And I need to clarify two concepts here in this definition. One is what is a network function, and another one is what is high performance networking. So a network function is basically a program, any program that manipulates network traffic. Um, these programs, uh, usually what they do is a series of basic operations such as read a packet, uh, forward it, drop it, modify it, its headers, or create new packets. And combining these primitives, you can build any network function you can think of. For example, a firewall essentially is a, an application that reads incoming packets, compares them to a table of rules, and executes an action depending on the result. It either forwards the packet or drops it. A network address translator gets incoming packets, modifies its headers, source IP, destination IP, recalculates checksum, and forwards the packet. And a tunneling application gets incoming packets, creates new ones, embeds the old one into the new one, and send it through the network. So these are the type of applications that you can build with Snap. And what is about high performance networking? So the networking field has changed quite a lot in the last five or six years. What has happened is that the hardware has become much better and the prices have dropped. So nowadays you can get a 10G NIC for 100, 200 bucks, depending on the vendor. So NICs of 25G, 4G are affordable. But still, the, the appliances, the equipment that you find in data centers are still very expensive, these high-end routers by Cisco. So people start to have this idea of maybe I can build a piece of hardware that is equivalent to these high-end routers using commodity off-the-shell uh, pieces. Maybe you can build a, a piece of hardware that is equivalent, but you still need to put some software in that hardware. Um, so what would you put? And the natural choice, it feels like it will be Linux, no? because Linux will conquer the world. We just put Linux everywhere. But the point is like Linux, it doesn't fit well in this scenario, because the way Linux works is a general purpose operating system. And whenever a, a packet hits the NIC, there's going to be an interrupt, and then the kernel has to handle this packet. It goes through all the networking layer of the kernel until it, reach, it reaches user space where we are running our network function. So what happens is that a network function is split into lands, in user space land and kernel land. And there is a cost of this packet going through the networking layer of the kernel that at these speeds is, is significant. For example, if we are uh, using a 10G NIC, um, uh, dealing with packets of 500, uh, 50 bytes, so every 440 nanoseconds, a new packet is hit in the NIC. If we want to process all these packets with one single core at 2.5 gigahertz, that means we have 1,500 cycles per packet for our network function. That's our budget. And, it, and this gets worse if the packet is smaller. In the smallest possible packet of 64 bytes, we are getting a new packet every 51 nanoseconds. If uh, operations that happen in the kernel, such as local locks or uh, an L2 CASMIS, has a cost that it will eat almost the whole budget. And there is a great article uh, um, of a presentation by Jesper Bruet, who is there, hello, <laughs> where he explains all these things. So, uh, so people um, found out this problem in the kernel, and they start to think of solutions. Um, and there are many solutions to this problem. Um, things in the kernel has improved, as, uh, also it's worth mentioning that. But one of the solutions was to do a kernel bypass. And a kernel bypass, essentially what it means is you tell the kernel, hey, uh, don't worry about the NIC, leave it to me, I know how to handle, and then you program a driver in user space, <laughs> which is quite hard, no? but that's how you do it. Uh, Michael, Luke Gori, the originator of SNAP, and my colleague Asumu Takikawa delivered a talk about how you can write a driver in user space yesterday. Um, and there are other toolkits that follow a similar approach. Uh, 
There is a toolkit, uh, very well known, called DPDK by Intel. There is a collection of drivers in user space by different vendors. And there is also BPP, now renamed to FDIO uh, by Cisco. It's a project on the Linux Foundation. And it follows a philosophy very similar to SNAP. So let's go with SNAP. SNAP was a project that started in 2012 by Luke Gorey. It's mostly developed in Lua. And SNAP means fast in Swedish. Uh, fast is something that characterizes SNAP, uh, SNAP because SNAP is fast because it has a kernel bypass. It is fast because it's written in Lua, network functions are written in Lua, so that's faster than uh, coding in C. It's very easy with the SNAP to go from idea to code uh, to production. And it's also fast because it runs on top of LuaJIT. Uh, LuaJIT is a just-in-time compiler for Lua. It's a extremely fast virtual machine. It's regarded one of the fastest virtual machines out there. And in addition, has very good integration with C, thanks to a foreign function interface that is only available in LuaJIT. It's not implemented by standard Lua. And in SNAP, most of the data types and data structures are actually defined in C. How it works? In a SNAP, a network function is essentially a collection of apps connected together via links. And once we have this, uh, this uh, graph of apps, we pass into the SNAP engine that is going to run it in units called breads. So here's an example of a very basic program in SNAP. What we do is like we start the configuration, then we instantiate in this block the apps we need. We need a NIC. This is the, the driver that's going to read packets from the NIC. And then we have a filtering app that is going to filter packets with source port 80. And then we have a pickup uh, app where we're going to write down packets to an output file. Then on the next block, we connect these apps together. Whatever comes out from the NIC is going to fit the filtering app. And whatever comes out from the filtering app is going to fit the pickup app. We pass down this configuration to the engine, and we run it. This is how it will look like as a graph. Whatever comes out from the NIC, it goes to the filtering app. The filtering app does something with the packets, and whatever comes out is passed to the pickup that eventually writes down the packets to a file. So I said that the SNAP engine process packets in breads, and a bread has two steps. It has an inhale step that is going to put packets, a batch of packets actually, into the graph, and a cell step, a step that is going to process those packets. On the inhale step, the method pool of the apps is executed if it's defined, and on the exhale step, the method push of the apps is executed. This is how the pool method of the Intel driver looks like. Well, it leverages on a, another class called def, but what it does, it loops, and while it can receive packets, it's going to receive a packet and put it in the output link. And this is how the push method of the filtering app we, we showed we show before looks like. Uh, what it's going to do is going to read the input the incoming link, and while there are packets, receive them, and if the packet matches the expression, the filtering expression, it's going to transmit it to the output link, and if not, it drops it. As a summary, in SNAP, there are two things to keep in mind, is that usually there's only one app that is going to introduce packets into the graph. I call this app the originator app. Uh, this will be apps such as uh, driver, uh, that reads packets from the NIC, or for example, a pickup reader that reads packets from a pickup file, or an application that builds packets on the fly. And then all the other apps are going to implement a push method because the push method is what it gives the apps the opportunity to do something with the packet. This is how a packet looks like in a SNAP. It's a very simple data structure. It's an array of bytes, 10K actually, with a length field. And, this, and here's how a, a link looks like. A link is a buffer of packets, 1,000, and it's actually a ring buffer. It has two pointers, a read pointer to read packets from, and a write pointer, pointer to write packets to. Um, what kind of things you can do with a SNAP? So you can do anything. Anything that has to do with packets, you can build it with a SNAP. Uh, but once you start with a SNAP, you don't have to build everything from scratch because a SNAP already gives you a vast catalog of things that are already built into the, into the toolkit. For example, libraries. 
You have libraries for parsing protocols, IPv4, IPv6, TCP, calculating checksums. You have apps, drivers, filtering apps, load generators, sockets. I said that SNAP is mostly aimed for high performance networking, but still you can use um, the interfaces by the operating system, Unix socket, um, ROS socket, TAP, and it already has full-fledged programs, L2BPN, a Lisper, lightweight after network function, IP fix. And on the next slide, I'm going to go through some of these applications that we built, and I will show you what is the things that we did. For example, we built a lightweight after network function. Lightweight after uh, is a network function. It's, a, it's part of a standard called lightweight 4 over 6. This is a, an architecture for deploying IPv6 only networks and still offering IPv4 connectivity and services. Uh, it was a project mostly funded by Deutsche Telekom because they are deploying this architecture in their next generation networks uh, called Telestream. And you know, a few months ago, I wrote down a blog post about how Lightweight After, Lightweight 4 over 6 actually works. If you are interested, please check it out. Uh, another application we built was Snapwall. It is a L7 firewall. And also, that's L3 and L4. For the L7 firewalling, we use a library called uh, Leaf NTPI, it's an open source library. And for the L3 and L4 filtering, we develop our own domain specific language called PFLAN. It was a project founded by LNET Foundation. This is a foundation based in the Netherlands that founds open source project that helps improving the internet. Uh, actually, its uh, chef um, delivered a talk yesterday, um, a, a keynote called The Future of the Internet. And all the information on, on the development process of Snapwall is at this website, snapwall.org. It was a project developed by my colleague Asumu and Adrian. IPFIX, uh, IPFIX stands for IP, IP Flow Information Export. It's a format for exporting network flows. It's based on Cisco's NetFlow, I think. Uh, yeah, it was um, also a project developed by uh, my colleague Asumu. And he wrote down a blog post explaining um, the, how the tool was built and how it works. And, and lastly, this is something that I built recently. Um, it's a DNS service discovery. It's for using Snap. I, I developed this as a tutorial to show how you can use Snap for building programs using um, top interfaces. Uh, and what it does, it helps you to discover uh, multicast devices in a local network, such as Chromecast or um, Amazon's Fire TV, et cetera. And I wrote down a blog post uh, uh, about how all the development process from an uh, idea to code. So how to get it started? Um, all the source code is, uh, is at the GitHub. So you can fetch it to GitHub and CD Snap, make. The community also has around in a Slack channel, snackslack.com. There's also an official uh, starting to, uh, getting a started guide. Um, but maybe it's a little bit outdated. Uh, a few months ago, I wrote down a blog post called Snap, explaining it in less than 10 minutes, which is essentially this talk in blog format. And that was all from my side. Um, I hope you like it. And if there are any questions, I'm glad to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you for the talk, Diego. Uh, we do have some time for questions. So. Uh, thank you for, for your presentation. Um, uh, I like the idea that Lua is used for programming and um, uh, a project that also have a programming capability open with speech. Um, uses like a low level uh, state, not state machine, but like a Turing machine with a set of registers. So have you tried to um, do some switching, some uh, L2, L3 switches with uh, uh, Snap? Okay, I think the question is if we have tried to build a switch with a Snap. Yeah. I think you could build it. I think actually there is a learning bridge. Uh, that means there is a tool that can learn the mapping between MAC address uh, and a port. Uh, but I think, I don't know if you see the, it's part of the repository or it was never merged, but there was some attempts to build this tool as switch. Hmm. Hello. 
Hello, Diego. Hi. Um, I, I read in your GitHub that you have some support for uh, OpenStack. Um, what's the status of this uh, support? So you provide an MT, uh, ML2 drivers for OpenStack somehow? Ah, is it the question that there is support for OpenStack uh, with Snap? Yes. OK, uh, I'm not very familiar with, but what I know is that Luke Gorey, some years ago, I think it was in 2015, he had to implement Snap, the interfaces of the neutron layer of OpenStack. So you could plug uh, a Snap into the neutron layer of OpenStack. Does, does it make sense? Because I'm not very familiar with OpenStack. Yes. Stack. yes. Yeah. So okay. are you using OBS, Open Virtual Switch, or something like that? Yeah. Or you are just programming this uh, layer two functionalities uh, directly with Snap? Mm. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm not very familiar. I, I know that he had to implement that because it was a requirement. It was a long process. Uh, yeah, open stack is like that, yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, my last question, sorry. Uh, um, can you implement using Snap higher functions like uh, filtering or uh, load balancers or something like that? Thanks. Okay, load balancers, no. And what was the other one? Filtering. Filtering. Firewall. Ah, firewall. I mean, yes. The, the, okay, the question was if we have tried, if we have, if we have used Snap for building high level applications such as a firewall or load balancer. Load balancer, no. Uh, and a firewall, the, the one that I mentioned, Snapwall, is a, is a firewall even for uh, L7 for application level. And uh, also that's L3 and L4. So we are out of time now. So if you have any more questions, you can take it off stage, please. And okay. Thanks once again. Thank you very much.